There are three classroom practices that build social and emotional engagement with early learners. But first, let's take a look at why social-emotional competence is so important. The brain is the only organ that changes in response to experience after birth. High-quality infant, toddler, and preschool experiences can help shape solid, healthy neural pathways that remain for a lifetime. Children who have a strong social-emotional foundation experience more academic success, fewer negative interactions with adults, and more friendships with peers. Without quality early interventions, children who exhibit challenging behavior, especially aggressive behavior in preschool, tend to continue this pattern of behavior throughout school. Let's take a look at the three classroom practices to help build social-emotional competence. They are creating nurturing and responsive relationships, creating supportive environments, and creating social-emotional supports. Nurturing and responsive relationships are the foundation and are essential to healthy social development Children learn and develop in the context of relationships that are responsive, consistent, and nurturing. When children have those strong relationships, when they're able to have warm and healthy relationships with the peers in their classrooms, when they have strong relationships with adults, that reduces the frequency of behavior problems. Here are a few strategies for creating nurturing and responsive relationships. Number one. Positive adult interactions. Engage in one-to-one -one interactions at eye level. Follow the child's lead and interests during play. Listen to children and encourage them to listen to others. Number two, maintain a five-to-one ratio of deposits to withdrawals. Examples of making deposits or positive interactions might be greeting every child at the door by name, Placing a call to a child's parent in front of them to say what a great day he or she is having or send home positive notes. Giving hugs, compliments, and thumbs up for accomplishing tasks. Examples of making withdrawals or negative interactions might be, no, don't, stop, demands or directions, and using a loud voice. A third strategy for creating nurturing and responsive relationships is reframing. What we try to get practitioners to do is, is to not jump to what's wrong with a child, but to think about from a posture of empathy and support, what's this behavior about? So you might, to reframe a challenging behavior, you might say, this child really needs a lot more of my attention and support versus this child is trying to make me crazy. When we reframe how we think about challenging behavior, how we interact with children changes, and that's really pivotal. That allows us to view the child with challenging behavior as a child who has needs, needs that might be unmet. The second classroom practice to help build social-emotional competence is by creating high-quality supportive environments. This includes environmental design, instructional materials, scheduling, child guidance, and teacher interactions that meet high-quality practices. Here are three strategies for creating high-quality supportive environments. Number one, teach behavior expectations and rules. When we have rules and expectations established in a program, then we teach them explicitly. Let's say uh, expectation is to be a friend and the rule is to take turns. There's some little ones who come to school not really knowing what that means, but they hear a lot. I need to take turns, you need to take turns. And so that child might need explicit instruction and guidance on how to take turns. Number two, design environments that promote engagement. Teachers are good at setting up the environment. They look at their classroom really from the child's eyes and they think about what would help every child in my classroom know where to go and what to do. And then they make sure their activities are just the right length, right materials, so that kids are always actively engaged in the learning process. Number three, plan for and teach transitions and schedules. 
You want to make sure that when you structure your activities, there's a clear beginning, how we start our activity, what happens in the middle, and the children anticipate the end so that they know that the end is coming and what will happen next. The third classroom practice that builds social and emotional engagement with early learners is creating social emotional supports. There are key social emotional skills that children need as they enter school and throughout life. These are confidence, capacity to develop good relationships with peers and adults, concentration and persistence on challenging tasks, ability to effectively communicate emotions, ability to listen to instructions and be attentive, and ability to solve social problems. Here are a few strategies for creating social emotional supports. Number one, teach and encourage friendship skills. Number two, teach problem solving. It's helpful for teachers to think about how to support problem solving in the moment. And they do that by anticipating when problems might happen. So center time is a time where children are negotiating what they're gonna play and who's gonna play and what they'll play with. And that's a time that the teacher needs to be alert, um, be ready to move in and be proximal to the kids if they have a problem, and then support them as they engage in the problem solving process. When you support children in problem solving, we build the skill of problem solving rather than just directing their activities. Number three. Develop social emotional literacy. Emotional literacy is the ability to identify emotions within yourself and others. So an emotional literacy skill for a young child would include them being able to identify when they're angry and tell a teacher or a peer, I'm mad, he took the block and that makes me mad. The more emotion children can label that they know and they understand, the better the social skills. So kids who have strong emotional literacy are kids who tolerate their frustration better, they regulate their emotion better, ultimately they get in fewer fights with others and have better outcomes in terms of their learning. These three classroom strategies can build social and emotional engagement with early learners and create more positive early learning environments for students. The strategies discussed here are provided by the school-wide PBIS and program-wide PBIS frameworks. To learn more about Productive Learning Climate and the Get Georgia Reading campaign, visit getgeorgiareading.org.